before you view this video, it is recommended that you view the videos uh, on equations. That video playlist on equations, it is good you view it. Uh, we shall limit our discussion to uh, linear inequalities in one variable uh, because we do have uh, linear inequalities in two variables. So, please. Now, let's get started. Um, when we talk of inequality, remember when we talk about an equation, when we talked about an equation, equation, we discussed uh, it, there are several words uh, synonymous with equation. Okay, we talk about equality, equality, equity, equanimity, uh, equal, equate, equate. Okay, that is equation. Now, but when when uh, we are not talking about equality, that means it is inequality. That is not equal, unequal, unequal. I know somebody might say, why don't you call it inequation <laughs> or or unequation? Uh, I don't know. You know that is English anyway. But we talk about inequality or we say unequal. Uh, you know, that is what creates a problem in this world. Uh, when, when everybody is not treated with equity, when everybody is not treated equally, it causes problems in the world, right? Uh, even the problems we have right now in the world, in several countries, many countries, is because everybody is not treated equally. And the same thing comes to mathematics. Uh, if uh, inequality, as you see, we shall see it as we solve. Uh, it is uh, more challenging than solving uh, equations. You know, when we solved equations, it was pretty straightforward. It wasn't difficult. Uh, with inequality, it's a bit challenging. But, uh, I'll try and teach it well, okay? So, but that is the issue here, okay? Now, when I am not equal to you, or when you are not equal to me, then two things occur. It is either I am greater than you, or you are greater than, or, and you are less than me, or I am less than you, and you are greater than me. It is the two things that uh, occur. So, uh, because of that, we now introduce some uh, symbols uh, uh, in inequality. Symbols. So, uh, because it's not equal, of course, when we have equal, that, was, that is equal, but that is equation. But because it's not equal, then it's two things. You see that I am greater than you and you are less than me, or you are greater than me and I'm less than you. Okay? But anyway, all human beings are equal, you know, so we are all equal, okay? Now, uh, so if you have uh, something that looks like L, looks like L, L as in lion, okay, it looks like L, this is less than, less than. And then uh, you have something that is just opposite it, you know, in sign, this means greater than greater than. Okay? Then we also have a, an issue, you know, when we have equal sign, equal is these two lines, two horizontal lines. But when you replace the first horizontal line, and you still put the second horizontal line, this means less than or equal to. Then we also have this. This means uh, greater than or equal to. Uh, other symbols that we have, although we might not use it, if we have the less than and we have two, 
two uh, lines. This is a far by less than. Far by less than. And we have, if we have the greater than, and we have the two lines like this, this is far by greater than. Far by greater than. Okay? So these are kind of some of the things to use. And of course, when you have three lines, it means equivalent. If you have a three lines, it means equivalent. We are going to... There are two basic things that we will note about inequality. We have to note those two things and then we shall solve some problems. Now, like I said earlier on, this is linear inequality in one variable. That is what we are going to do in this video. Two basic things to note. To note when solving inequalities. The first one, uh, when we, you know, with equations, uh, you can swap it. Like you can make your left hand side to be your right hand side, and your right hand side to be your left hand side, and there's not gonna be problem, right? It's not going to be a problem if we do that. Like with equations, if we look at equations, we could write that uh, 2 plus 3 is 5. This is arithmetic. We can also write that 5 is 2 plus 3. Okay, arithmetic. Uh, algebra, we can say maybe x plus 7 is 10. We can also say 10 equal to x plus 7. With equations, you can do this. But with inequality, there's a problem. So, as long as we say with inequality, if you write 2 plus 3 to be less than 6, of course, we know that 2 plus 3 is 5. And 5 is less than 6. When we swap it, when we put 6 here, and we put 2 plus 3 here, the inequality sign is reversed. The inequality is reversed. Inequality is changes. It's no longer less than. This should not be greater than. Okay? So in other words, if you swap it, if you swap your left-hand side and your right-hand side, the inequality is reversed. Okay? When you have 5, it's less than 6. When you swap it, then 6 will be greater than 5. So the first thing you know is uh, when you swap the inequality, when you swap the inequality, uh, what I mean by swap means uh, left hand side to be right hand side and right hand side to be left hand side. Then inequality is reversed. Inequality is reversed. That's the first thing you have to know about inequality. Now the second thing you need to know about inequality is this. When we do um, when we do equations, right? When we do equations, uh, like when you, uh, if we had uh, two plus three to be five, okay, and you decide to multiply everybody by two, if you decide to multiply everybody by two, so that gives you what? That implies that a uh, four plus six six is what ten. Right? If you, even if you decide to multiply everybody by negative 2, uh, if you decide to multiply everybody by negative 2, you still have that negative 4, negative 6 will give you negative 10. So you see, it's, it's in order, you know, it's also equal to when you decide to multiply that. Okay, so, but with inequality, it's not like that when you decide to uh, multiply or divide by a negative. Uh, I'm going to show you an example. If you have, uh, when you have this, when you have 5 and you have 6, 
the inequality you have to put is less than right. Okay, let's do it. Assuming you decide to, to do negative 5 and negative 6. Okay. What will you now have here? Negative 5 and negative 6. Uh, remember, some of you, my, some students make mistakes on this. If we consider the real number line, the real number line, that's, please, before you view this video also, uh, view numbers. Numbers. So that is, we talked about real number line. Uh, you see that a zero is, is always there. Okay, zero is neither positive nor negative. Uh, to the right of zeros are the positive, to the left of zeros are the negative. Numbers. Please view the video I did on numbers, please. So you, you see that uh, this is negative five, this is negative six. Okay. As you go down, you see that this is greater than this, okay? Uh, uh, if you look at this, 2 is greater than 1, 1 is greater than 0, 0 is greater than negative 5, negative 5 is greater than negative 6. I, we discussed that in the video on numbers. So, now you ask yourself, what will you do to 5 to give you negative 5? You either multiply by a negative 1, or you divide by negative 1. Okay, the same thing goes with uh, this. What will you do to 6 to give you negative 6? You multiply by negative 1 or you divide by negative 1. So you see that whenever you multiply or divide by a negative number, the inequality is reversed. The inequality is reversed. Okay? So when, uh, when you... When you... When you multiply or divide by a negative number or value, okay, the inequality is reversed. So, you, you see, this is the main things you would have to note. These are the main things you have to note. Uh, about inequalities, these two main things, and you should be good to go. These are the main things, and with this one, it also applies to variables. Okay, when you have a x plus seven, as mean you have x plus seven to be less than ten, if you have to swap it, x plus seven, if you swap it, which means make your left hand to be your right hand, and your right hand to be your left hand. Uh, the inequality separate, just like you have in the equation, just like we did in the equation, the equal sign separates the left-hand side from the right-hand side. The same thing here. Inequality sign separates the right-hand side from the left-hand side. So when you swap it, this becomes greater than. So please take note of that. Then, another thing to note, and we talk about this uh, on uh, the videos on equations, it's good to, make, to have your variable on the left-hand side. We talked about it before uh, on equations. We talked, the reason, we talked about the reason. So make sure you always have your variable to be on your left. Okay? Now, we will solve inequality like we solve equations. That is the joy of it. We are going to solve. That was why I asked you to view the video list on equations. Equality first, before inequality, before you view it. So, we are going to solve inequality like we solve equations. Uh, we, there are two methods. Uh, you can use my method or you can use uh, any method you're familiar with. I illustrated those two methods on the video on equations. It's the same process, okay? But we have to take note of these two. That is the thing. We have to take note of these two. Then we also have to make sure that the variable is always on the left-hand side. For all the questions we are going to solve in this video, it shall be solve, graph, check, and then write solution in interval notation. So see, see what we are going to do. We will solve the inequality. We shall graph our solution on a number line. We shall uh, uh, write the solution set, write the solution set, In interval notation, 
Interval notation, I will talk about it in a moment. And then we shall uh, check our solution. Check our solution. So this is usually what I ask my students in every inequality I give them. Okay? Solve graph, uh, check, and write in interval notation. Write your solution set in interval notation. We talked about interval notation before. Let's quickly go over it now. Interval notation. Of course, from the word interval notation, that means it's a notation for representing intervals. Okay? Uh, this is a notation for representing intervals. Uh, usually, uh, intervals are said paired numbers. Okay? Uh, usually, paired numbers. Usually paired numbers. Usually paired numbers. And those paired numbers are what we call endpoints. 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 Uh, basically, we have four, four notations. Uh, if we have the uh, uh, the bracket, bracket open, bracket close. Bracket open, bracket close. This is a closed interval. Close interval, okay. Uh, both endpoints are included. Uh, closed at both ends is closed at both ends. Closed at both ends, and uh, both both endpoints are included. Now, included means uh, uh, the the endpoints are included. They are included. Both endpoints are included. Then that's number one. Number two, we have the uh, parenthesis open, parenthesis close. This is what we call open interval. Open interval. Uh, it is open at both ends. Open at both ends. Uh, both endpoints are excluded. Both endpoints are not included or excluded, are not included. That is the open interval. Uh, uh, and uh, with this close, the only the thing with the uh, close and open is that with the for the closed, you have the less than or equal to, or you have greater than or equal to. For the open, you have only less than or greater than. So the equal sign makes it included because of the equal sign, the equality sign. That is what makes it included. If you don't see equality sign, you know, if it's just less than or if it's only greater than, then it is just an open interval. Uh, we also have a case whereby we have the half open or half closed. You have a half closed or half open. Half closed or half open. Half open, interval. Interval. Okay? Half open or half closed interval. This is a closed at one end, open at another end. Close at first end. First end is included. First end point is included. Then open at second end. Open at second end. Second end point is not included. Is not included. Uh, then number four, you have the open at first end, closed at second end. This is also half closed or half open. It's the same thing. Uh, 
uh, this is a open at first end, open at first end, first end point is not included, it's not included, and then closed at second end, closed at second end, second end point is included. Okay, so you will see that we are studying inequality because we have problems in this world and not everybody is treated equally, not everything is treated equally, okay. Uh, you don't make the same score on your exams, assuming you take five exams, you don't make equal scores on each, you know, sometimes you make a lower score on one and a higher score on the other, so that's not equal, okay, anything that is not equal, inequality. Now, so... Uh, we have talked about this, so in all the quiz, we're now going to solving problems. Uh, for each problem we'll solve, we'll graph, we write the solution set in interval notation, and then we check our solution. In this order, it is good you follow it in this order so that you will not get it wrong, okay? Let's get started. So solve, graph. Write solution in interval notation and then check solution. Check solution. Question one. One plus six x is greater than negative seventeen. So the same thing we do. As you solve in like equation, I will solve this using two methods, and then I will now be using one method for the rest of the questions. So if I'm using the method I like best, I will move this one over here. So 6x greater than negative 17 minus 1. 6x is greater than negative 18, and you divide both sides by 6. You divide both sides by 6, and x will be greater than negative 3. And this becomes your answer. But you must not solve it the way I do. You can solve it this way. 1 plus 6x greater than negative 17. And this is the way some of your teachers taught you. You do minus 1 here, minus 1 here. So you have 6x greater than negative 18. You divide by 6, divide by 6. So x is greater than negative 3. So it doesn't matter, okay, provided you get the answer right, and the method is good, okay. So we have solved it. The next thing we do now is to graph it. So we graph on a number line. Now for your number line, what I need, I need you to draw the line, the horizontal line. I need you to put an arrow at the end, and I need you to write X. That is the real number line. Uh, please view the videos I did on numbers. Then I will need you to write zero. Zero is always included in a number line. If you want, you put all this, you put some numbers, but the main thing I want, I want zero, and then I want negative three. This is the main thing I want. That's the main thing I want on the number line. If you want to add other numbers, that's up to you. Uh, uh, this is greater than negative three, right? So is it going to move right or left? Uh, if you look, I'm going to give you a trick. I'll give you a trick. But let me say this first. Uh, you make sure that your variable is on the left-hand side, right? So this means all the numbers that are greater than negative 3. If you look at this, all the numbers that are greater than negative 3, are they to the right of negative 3 or are they to the left of negative 3? They are to the right. So because there is no equal sign here, this is only greater than this will be an open interval. It's, an, it's open. Okay? So this will be open going right. Open going right. So all you need to do is to draw your open going right. This is all you need to do. Open going right. That is it. 
You draw it like that, that is going right. Like this, and it's going right. That is all I need. Okay, open, going right. Now, this is a trick I want to give you now to share with you. And this only works if you make sure that your, uh, your variable is on the left-hand side. Okay? Once you make sure your variable is on the left-hand side, then look at the direction of the arrow. <laughs> you know, this is pointing towards this. Right? All the greater than. So it's going to go right. That's the trick. It works. It's a trick. It's, it, it works. You can call it Sandow's trick. <laughs> Yeah, but it works, honestly. It works. In all the inequality will solve. Provided you make sure that your variable is on the left. Any direction it goes will satisfy that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we have, this is the graph. That is it. Just like this. The solution set will be negative 3. Okay, because that is the way it's going. Now, let me ask you this. Do we have, what is the greatest number? The biggest number in this world is it a hundred million or is it what of one thousand billion what of a one trillion okay there is no biggest number if you keep going there is no biggest number okay the same thing with smallest number what is the smallest number if you say zero what of negative one because zero is greater than negative one somebody who does not have anything zero it's better than somebody who is owing one dollar, okay? Even somebody who does not have anything, it's better than somebody who has five dollars, but is owing twenty dollars, negative fifteen. Five minus twenty, negative fifteen. So, uh, you see, if you keep going to the negative, still doesn't have the smallest number, just not. So, uh, this, because of this, we put infinity. And because it, it is infinite, it doesn't have an end, so it's not an end. Uh, it's not closed. It's open. Infinity and negative infinity is always open because there is no biggest number. It doesn't have an end. Okay. And then, if we want to check our solution, we first of all write check. Then we write the main problem: one plus six x greater than negative seventeen. We write our left hand side, right hand side. Left hand side is 1 plus 6x. Right hand side is negative 17. Our x is greater than negative 3. So let x be what? Let our x be what? Anything greater than negative 3. Anything. What's the easiest thing you can pick? 0. Pick 0. So you see 1 plus 6 times 0. 1 plus 0 is 1. And you see that 1 is greater than negative 17. Now, we check, in it, we check for inequality, everybody will not get the same thing. Because somebody might pick 1. Somebody might pick 2. Okay? But if you see, uh, 1 is greater than negative 17. And that is it. Question 2. Negative 1 minus 3x is less than or equal to 8. So here, as usual, like we we'll transfer this, this will be negative 3x less than or equal to 8 plus 1. So negative 3x is less than or equal to 9. And then I will have to divide both sides by negative 3. I remember the two things we talked about earlier. Once you divide the inequality, once you divide by a negative or multiply by a negative, the inequality is reversed. So once I do negative 3x divided by negative 3, immediately I do this, I have to reverse this to greater than or equal to 9 divided by negative 3. So this cancels this. x will now be greater than or equal to negative 3. And this becomes your answer. Immediately you divide this, you have to change the inequality sign. Now, let's graph it. If we graph it, we draw a number line. We put x, we put 0, uh, negative 3. And this will be what? It's going to be closed, going right. Closed interval, going right. So I'll just come and do this. Closed interval, going right. 
because these are all the numbers greater than or equal to negative 3. So the solution set will be what? Closed interval negative 3, infinity open. It's going to be a half open interval. Yeah, closed at negative 3, but open at infinity. Then uh, check our solution, check our work. We write the main problem first. Negative 1 minus 3x less than or equal to 8. So this will be uh, left hand side, right hand side. Left hand side is negative 1 minus 3x. Right hand side is 8. Uh, our x is greater than or equal to negative 3. So this means you can still use negative 3 because it's included. You can use negative 3 because it's included. But if you use negative 3, you will get exactly 8. And that would be as if we are solving the equations. So let's just forget about using negative 3. Let's use something else. Okay, let's still express it as an inequality. But if you use negative 3, you are still correct. But it will be as if you are solving an equation. So let's just say let x be 0. The easiest thing we can use, 0. Negative 1 minus 3 times 0. Negative 1 minus 0. Negative 1. So we see that our negative 1 is less than or equal to 8. And it's still in order. That becomes our answer. Question 3. 12 is less than 2 minus 5x. Now, you see, what I asked you about, you know, uh, what I told you about, and then uh, I can solve this with two methods so that you can see if you still want to stick to the other method. I can show it to you with two methods. It doesn't matter. Uh, because I want my variable to always be on my left. That is what I want. I will just swap. And when I swap, the inequality is reversed. So this will be 2 minus 5x and 12. When I swap it, the inequality is reversed. Then, I move this over here. So this will be negative 5x greater than 12 minus 2. This will be negative 5x greater than 10. Then I have to divide by a negative. And when I divide by a negative, inequality is reversed again. So this will be negative 5x divided by negative 5. Once I do this, I go ahead and reverse this. Less than 10 divided by negative 5. This will, negative 5 divided by negative 5 is 1. So x is less than negative 2. And this becomes your answer. Okay, let's say you don't want this method. You can still do it with the method that you might be familiar with. If we have 12 less than 2 minus 5x, okay, we can still do minus 2 minus 2. So you have 10 less than negative 5x. Okay, and when you do this, you can do negative 5. Once you do negative 5, Immediately you do negative 5, right? You have to reverse this. You have to reverse this. You have to reverse it. Okay? So you now have that negative 2 is greater than x. And because negative 2 is greater than x, it is now important, always important that before you graph it, like I, act, like I said earlier on, you make sure that the left-hand side is uh, that the left, that the variable is on the left hand side, so that you can graph it. This is where students make mistake. When they now graph this, they tend to move it right. But here, the left hand side is the variable is not on the left hand side. So if you make this mistake, you see that's the problem. Okay. So if negative two is greater than x, that means that x will be less than negative two. Look at this. Pay attention to this very well. Immediately you divide by a negative is going to swap if you want to do it this way okay so that you can get back what we got here if you decide to grab this then you have to be careful because this means all numbers in which negative 2 is greater than so you have to be careful so if you want to use my trick you make sure that the variable is on the left hand side just make sure about it 
and then you should be fine. So if we grab this, assuming we grab this, we will have something like this if we graph it. X, we have 0 here. We have negative 2 here. This is an open interval. Open interval going what? Going left. Open interval going left. So we have something like this. It's going left. Open interval going left. You see that? And the solution set, what will be the solution set? It will be negative infinity to negative 2. And this is open. This will be the solution set. Remember, it is going left. So negative infinity comes first. Remember, it's going left. And to the left is to the left of zero. To the left is negative. Okay? To the left. It's negative. Up to negative 2. Okay, now let's go ahead and check it. Let's go ahead and check it. Like I said, when we check, we check with the main problem. We check with the main equation. So if we check that, we write our check first. We write the main problem 12 less than 2 minus 5x. We write the left hand side, right hand side. Left hand side is 12, right hand side is 2 minus 5x. Uh, because x is less than negative 2, let's pick something. Let's pick something. We can have negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, negative 7. Okay? Anything here. Anything from here to here. So we can pick anything from here. Let's pick negative 3. Okay? Let x be negative 3. So this is 12. This will be 2 minus 5 times negative 3. This will be 2 plus 15. And this will be what? 17. So you can see that 12 is less than 17. And then you can drink some water, you know. You drink some water, you know. Question 4. Negative 4 plus 6x less than or equal to negative 4 plus 5x. Okay, so I use the method I prefer best. So I bring this over here, take this over there. 6x minus 5x less than or equal to negative 4 plus 4. So x will be less than or equal to 0. Anything less than or equal to 0. So from 0 down, 0 to the left. So if we, uh, if we grab this, if we graph it, we have only 0. And this will be closed, going left. Closed, going left. That's it. That's the graph. Uh, the solution set will be from negative infinity, half open. Yeah, that's open at negative infinity and closed at zero. So this is a half open interval or half closed interval. Then let us check it. Check. We check with the main problem. We write a negative 4 plus 6x less than or equal to negative 4 plus 5x. Uh, we have our left hand side. We have our right hand side. Left hand side is negative 4 plus 6x. Right hand side is negative 4 plus 5x. Uh, what do we take as our x? Anything here. We can take 0, but it will be as if we are solving the equation. So let's take negative 1. Okay. Let our x be negative 1. So this will be negative 4 plus 6 times negative 1, which is negative 4 minus 6, which is negative 10. So this is negative 10. On the right hand, we have negative 4 plus 5 times negative 1, which is negative 4, negative 5, which is negative 9. So you see that negative, nine, negative 10 is less than or equal to negative 9. And that is still correct. Negative 10 is less than negative 9. Okay? Next question. Question 5. 3 parentheses x plus 2 close parentheses plus 4 is less than negative 2x plus 14 plus x. So we distribute this, we distribute, this will be 3x plus 6. Please view the video on distributive property. 
then this is plus 4, is less than uh, negative 2x plus x is negative x plus 14. Bring this over here, this will be 3x plus x is less than uh, 14 minus 6 minus 4. I mean, if you want to write 3x plus 10, if you want to do that, because I did it here, that's still correct. It does not matter. If you want to write 3x plus 10 less than negative x plus 14, because some folks will say, why didn't you uh, fix it here before you transfer it? The same thing. So this will be 3x plus x is less than 14 minus 10. So 4x will be less than 4 and x will be less than 1. We divide both sides by 4, so x is less than 1. <coughs> if we grab this, we will get our x, we put 0 here, we put 1. And this will be open interval going left. Open going left. Now what will be the solution set? Solution set will be from negative infinity to 1 and you open it at 1. It's an opening table. Then if you want to check it, if you want to check, we first of all write the main problem, 3, x plus 2, plus 4. We check with the main problem. Check with the main problem. Less than negative 2x plus 14 plus x. Uh, let our x, left hand side, this is left hand side, 3, x plus 2 plus 4, and then our right hand side will be negative 2x plus 14 plus x. So let our x be, uh, let our x be 0. Let x be 0. That is the easiest one we can get. So this is 3, 0 plus 2 plus 4, and you know, some people will come and do this distributive property here. Just go ahead and do PEMDAS. Okay, this is 3 times 2 plus 4, which is 6 plus 4, which is 10. So we have 10 on the left. Here, this will be negative 2 times 0 plus 14 plus 0. So this is 0 plus 14 plus 0, which is 14. So you see that 10 is less than 14. And it's still correct. 10 is less than 14. Okay. Question 6. Question 6. 3 x minus 1 minus x minus 2 is greater than minus 2 x plus 4. With this reboot, this will give us 3 x minus 3 minus x plus 2 greater than minus 2 x minus 8. So this is 2x minus 1 uh, greater than negative 2x minus 8. Bring this over here, 2x plus 2x greater than minus 8 plus 1. So 4x is greater than negative 7, and x will be greater than negative 7 over 4. You know, we divide it by 4. Yeah, we, once we because we divide by positive, the inequality will still remain. The only time the inequality changes is when we divide by negative. Yeah. And, you know, I don't want to be skipping those, that step. I skipped it in this previous one. I, I would have shown it to you. 4x divided by 4 greater than negative 7 divided by 4. So this will be x greater than negative 7 over 4. I can still write this here. From here, this is a 4x divided by 4 less than 4 divided by 4. And then you have x less than 1. Yeah. It's not good to skip the steps here so that you know when you're dividing by positive or when you're dividing by negative. Now, remember, if you're dividing by negative, the inequality is reversed. Okay, let's do this uh, on a number line. If we do it on a number line, we're going to get, we write our x, we write our 0. And then negative 7 over 4 will be here. And this will be... Uh, open interval going left. Open interval going left. So I put my open interval and it goes left. 
I'm sorry. Open it up, we're going right. <laughs> Don't mind, Mr. C. Okay. <laughs> Open it up, we're going right. Don't mind, Mr. C. All right. Uh, then, what is the uh, interval notation? That would be from negative 7 over 4, since it's going this way, up to positive infinity. That would be the interval notation. Do we stop here? No. We've got to do what? Check. So let's check our work. So we write check. And we write the main problem 3x minus 1 minus x minus 2 greater than negative 2 x plus 4. And we write our left hand side. Our left hand side is 3x minus 1 minus x minus 2. And our right hand side will be negative 2 times x plus 4. Uh, what will you what are we choose as x? Okay? Don't come and start choosing fraction. Maybe choose another fraction. What is the easiest thing? What is the easiest thing to choose as x? Let x be what? Zero. That's the easiest. To check it. So this will be 3 times 0 minus 1 minus 0 minus 2. So this is 3 times negative 1 minus negative 2. Negative 3 plus 2, which is negative 1 on our left hand side. Now this will be negative 2, 0 plus 4. Negative 2 times 4, which is negative 8. So we see that our negative 1 is greater than negative 8, which is still correct. Negative 1 is greater than negative 8. Last but not the least, question 7. Question 7, negative 3, 2x plus 1, greater than negative 2x plus 4. Apply the distributive property, we have negative 6x minus 3, greater than negative 2x minus 8. Bring like terms together, negative 6x plus 2x, greater than negative 8 plus 3. Negative 6x plus 2x gives you negative 4x, greater than negative 8 plus 5, give, negative 8 plus 3 gives you negative 5. See, and now we have to divide by negative. So, once we put negative 4x divided by negative 4, immediately we write this, immediately. Change this guy. Change it. Okay? Negative 5 divided by negative 4. This divides this, gives you 1. So x is less than 5 over 4. Negative divided by negative is positive. So x is less than 5 over 4. Next thing we do is we graph. Graph, graph. Graph. Always put your 0. And this is 5 over 4. So we put it here, 5 over 4. So this will be what? Open, going, left. Open, going, left. So this is open, here, going, left. So the interval notation will be from negative infinity to 5 over 4. That's the interval notation. And what's the next thing you do? You do what? You check. Check your work. Check, 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 check. Check. We write the main problem, negative 3, 2x plus 1, greater than negative 2x plus 4. Our left hand side and our right hand side. Left hand side is negative 3, 2x plus 1. Right hand side negative 2x plus 4. What do we choose as our x? No. Because this solution, this graph or solution set tells you that anything here will satisfy the inequality. That is what it tells you. That all the, the region here, the region here satisfies the, this inequality. So anything you pick, if you pick anything outside, if you pick here, it's not gonna satisfy it. That is why. Uh, we do this. That's why we graph it, and that's why we write this. Tells you. So let's pick zero. Zero is the easiest thing. Okay. We write let x be zero. 
So this will be negative 3, 2 times 0, plus 1. So this is negative 3, 0 plus 1. This is negative 3 times 1, which is negative 3. And this will be negative 2, 0 plus 4. Negative 2 times 4, which is negative 8. We see that negative 3 is greater than negative 8. If we decide to pick something here, let's say we decide to pick 3. Right? Let's say we decide to pick 3. If we decided to pick 3, what would this be? This would be, the left hand side would be negative 3, 2 times 3 plus 1. Which is negative 3, 6 plus 1. Negative 3 times 7, which is negative 21. The right hand side would be negative 2, 3 plus 4. Which is negative 2 times 7, which is negative 14. You see that negative 21 is not, it's less than negative 14. Negative 21 is not greater than negative 14. It's not. It's not greater than negative 14. So that's why this tells us that all the region here, any number we pick here, satisfies the inequality. We shall stop here for tonight. We have inequality is a broad topic. So we'll do more, more videos. Thank you so much for listening. Oh,